Hey, I'm Douglas Caballero, and welcome to our segment, The Fifth Estate. This term describes any group other than the church, the rich, the common folk, and the press. And for us here at Music and Politics, music is the fifth estate. Occasionally, it keeps society's other classes in check and provides a little sanity. So here are the week's top three stories of musicians keeping politicians and governments honest, from Todd Akin to Russian homophobia. First off at number three, Locked in a death grip with Lady Gaga over the gay music fans of the world, Madonna has inadvertently taken on a bizarre Russian anti-gay law. Nine citizens are suing her for $10.5 million for allegedly breaking a new law that bans the promotion of homosexuality to minors. During her St. Petersburg concert earlier this year, she asked fans to raise their hands to show pink armbands in support of gays and lesbians in the presence of young people. You mean the audience wasn't 100% middle-aged gay men? Well, washed up or not, you gotta root for Madge on this one. Don't forget, she's already angered the Russian government for publicly supporting punk band Pussy Riot. Number two, there has been no Yes We Can style video this election cycle, but musicians are getting into the act with 90days90reasons.com. It features one thoughtful essay per day until the election from all types of pop culture figures, explaining why they support Obama. They include musicians like Paul Simon, My Morning Jacket, and Tao with the Get Down, Stay Down. Death Cab for Cutie frontman Ben Gibbard's essay leads with, Obama is the first president in US history to acknowledge the right of gay couples to marry and enjoy the full benefits of marriage in the eyes of the law. That's true. And finally, at number one, Senate candidate Todd Akin's ignorant comments about legitimate rape have elicited contempt from all walks of life, including his own Republican Party. But the person to deliver probably the best zinger so far has been a young woman, and rightly so. New York singer-songwriter Taylor Ferrara sarcastically defines illegitimate rape with a song. How can you tell if it's legitimate rape? I was a little drunk. Illegitimate rape. I knew the rape is 12. Illegitimate rape. My skirt was kind of short. Illegitimate rape. I'm married to the man. That's a husband's privilege. Well put. So what are other stories about music as the fifth estate? Hit me up on Twitter and the comment section. And look for our segments on Pussy Riot, Rage Against the Machine, and Silver Sun Pickups. I'm Douglas Caballero, and this is Music and Politics on TYT.